Good afternoon, Cultural family. Today is an overview as to exactly what ADPAC is, all of the organizations we will be working with, and the kind of structures that we'll be implementing to create structural inclusion in the British system. So to give an overview when I say structural inclusion, Britain is a country that was largely established on institutional racism, especially as far as African Caribbeans are concerned. Now, with the, Afri with the history, the 500 year history of the African Holocaust in the creation of the transatlantic slave trade, where unlike America, people can't point to us being slaves in Britain because Britain did all of its transatlantic slave trade in the Caribbean and South Americas, where it was out of sign, out of mind. There were very brutal practices that involved the daily torture of those subjected to free labor who were called slaves. And none of us, the descendants, nor those who were the victims were ever recompensed. There has never been any reciprocity in terms of a legal recognition of the infringement of our human rights. So ADPAC's number one manifesto issue is reparations for not only the descendants through institutional means, but, <coughs> excuse me, in the Caribbean <coughs> and in the Africas where we work with many delivery partners who have now established an entire chronological list of families, the government and corporations who were involved and profited from the transatlantic slave trade. So moving many years forward, when we talk about institutional inclusion, what we desire to have is parity. Now, ADPAC's position is that nothing given can be sustained and that we have to establish alternatives to every single institutional representation that is there. So it being the week of elections, we see that ADPAC is supporting the We Matter Party in terms of policy, capacity building, fundraising, creating awareness, and not only that, but also forging those links between the grassroots organizations that ADPAC is working with, particularly around initiatives such as the Schools to Industry Pipeline, which is an initiative that brings together youth engagement practitioners for all of those involved in advocating for and protecting children so that we create wraparound care for the African family where the child is the beneficiary. So today's show is about unveiling the A to Z of exactly what ADPAC is. So ADPAC is an institution whose role is to create institutional inclusion for African Caribbeans. We are ethnicity specific. We are not a race organization. We do not get involved in the race game because it is one that is already stacked against us. We are IC3, English Europeans are IC1, and we have bronze prize from the beginning. We are not a race based organization. We advocate for the specificity of our ethnicity, just like gypsy groups, just like Bangladeshi groups, just like Greek, Turkish, or any other ethnicity who are specific about who they are, which is why you can walk into any borough and find a Greek community center, a Jewish community center, a Bangladesh community center, Pakistani, so on, so on and so forth. But there is a marked lack of African Caribbean specific community centers run and owned on behalf of the African Caribbean citizens who will live in any particular borough, county, or anywhere else in the country. So it's very clear what we are lacking. Therefore, it's very clear what we need. We don't need to get into the hyperbole, which we've done in a back and forth over the 70 years since the Windrush generation has been here. We have exhausted the race game. Last year, I think 
after the example of seeing our Windrush generation stripped of assets, their documents being destroyed, which showed their legal residency, being asset stripped, kidnapped and deported. There's very little for us to discuss. We understand completely that there is no ethnic equity for African Caribbeans in the UK as the system currently stands. So when we talk about the specificity of African Caribbeans as an ethnicity, it is all about creating parity. How does one entity here have formal communication with another entity there? British entities, African Caribbean specific entities to lobby and advocate specifically on our behalf. Now, if you were to have a national discourse with people of the Jewish faith and the Yiddish community, they would be represented by the Board of Jewish Deputies. We don't have any kind of comparative. Only now we do in the African Diaspora Public Affairs Committee, which is a community interest organization specifically for and on our behalf. So now that I've laid all of that out and made it clear, let's start to go into exactly what ADPAC is. We represent African and African Caribbean interests on an economic front, educationally, employment, health, housing, justice, politics, trade and industry, and media. In essence, we are an institution that goes across every civic area of life for the African Caribbean community. So what are our structures? We have a very clear and robust structure that has a leadership which is national that feed down our policy into regional directors that looks like this. So ADPAC has a national leadership that goes across the same aforementioned areas underneath the governance of the trustees, which is economics, education, employment, health, housing, justice, politics, trade and industry. Now, this board feeds into the now, this board feeds into the regional chapters who are run by regional chairs. Regional chairs represent the members, the grassroots members, who are paid up members just like any civic organization or political party. By working with grassroots organizations, professionals and advocates, they coordinate their activity for and on behalf of the members where the wider population will draw from the benefits. Now, the membership for ADPAC is £5 a month. We find that nominal. It's £15 for organisation members. And then we call institutional members who won't actually be fully members of ADPAC because they don't have to be African Caribbean. They can be what we call friends of ADPAC. So friends of ADPAC are those institutional members like the civil service, like banks, like any outside organization that seeks to derive benefits from being aligned with and associated with our community. Now, I spoke about the regional chapters. Regional chapters we'll only have in the stronghold boroughs where we have good numbers where it is tangible for where it is feasible for us to have an outlet. So we go across Lewisham, Lambeth, Southwark, Hackney, Haringey, Brent and Croydon. Now, working within these boroughs is politically expedient for us. 
which is why we support counsellors and their objectives to create these centres that can coordinate local, local services. That is exactly what the regional check, these regional chairs will oversee, the grassroots organisation. Now, this is run from an app which, like the Schools to Industry Pipeline app, just manages all of the organisations who are delivering culturally competent services for and on behalf of African and African Caribbean people. So we look at the Schools to Industry Pipeline, which is the public health approach. The Schools to Industry Pipeline, the Schools to Industry Pipeline is a network of culturally competent organizations that go across youth psychologists, rites of passage. Now, African rites of passage gives young people a cultural context of being in their community. It brings up their citizenship, and then it gives them a measure of personality, personality and character that introduces them and makes them very strong and viable citizens within their communities. Alternative educational provision, student advocacy, which is organizations like Taking Positive Steps and the Black Child Agenda. We have been working with educators to create our own educational curriculum and have a very robust curriculum ready to go in a box today. Employment training and entrepreneurialism, which is provided by organizations like Access UK, who spend all of their time not only working with the grassroots organizations to coordinate their efforts, but also in terms of industry, so that they are literally connecting the dots from an educational perspective all the way into employment. Then child parent intervention. A lot of people are asking, what is this? So if we think about the Eurocentric lens, we think about social services being called, which would isolate the child from their parents whenever a family breakdown occurs. So we might have seen a lot of missing children recently who are being groomed by gangs. They become vulnerable the minute a family breaks down in its communication. The point of child parent intervention is to heal the rifts in the family. And obviously, if there is physical or sexual abuse taking place, our our counsellors have the experience not only to recognise that, but then to call in the agencies that would protect the child and take them out of the home. But before that takes place, what we desire is for the children to be integrated back into their family, where potentially the family may not have the skills or the tools to be able to do that themselves. Then we work with a number of youth mentoring organizations who, again, are specifically allocated to young men and women to give them an understanding of their interpersonal problems, overcoming societal hurdles, and clearing career paths and connecting them with all of the other components of the schools to industry pipeline. Last in the list, we have culturally competent youth psychologist services. Now, these, these counsellors would work in the schools, in the alternative spaces for education, and also with the child parent intervention as well. So what we would do is coordinate maybe a number of these agencies around one family so that they could get the multiple benefits. So what we invite delivery partners to do is to sign up to the schools to industry pipeline as a delivery partner so that when we are allocating funding, we can start to include you in that robust provision of culturally competent services. So you start to see that ADPAC is all about structure and structural inclusion. Now, when we talk about the parity, you see, this is created by the provision of our own institutions. 
It isn't asking anybody for anything other than our own resources, which we as taxpayers are entitled to. The one element that has been missing for us is organization. As I said, with the Jewish Board of Deputies, what you have is a robust representation, which is institutional, to have peer conversations. Now, this is why the Jewish community have realized parity, not because of any charity, but because they have an innate ability based on structural organization to now enter organizations and say, this is our representation. When you speak to us or for us, you communicate through them. And this is exactly what ADPAC is. We aren't a grassroots organization. We are an umbrella service that collectively coordinates the activity of our national organizations. So how do we hold those who work outside of our interests? To account. How do we do this through our policy? How do we do this through organization? So we have something called the We Matter campaign. It's not that we don't support marches. ADPAC won't hold marches or request marches. But what we will do is work with and on behalf of those who are organizing marches and signpost all of the organizations that are community interest organizations for those who are impassioned to go on marches to go and volunteer with, or it's a wasted exercise. If we galvanize and capacity build all of these people to come out and march, and then they go home and go back to their jobs the next day, it's a waste of time. So what we do is systemic. Now, what the We Matter campaign does is work with hundreds of influencers to shoot two minute short form effective communications. What we do is release those communications as a thunderclap, day, date, and hour. Then what we do is we put out a mandate to the public. And this is where this piece of information comes in. What we ask you to do to get involved in the We Matter campaign is record your own version of the campaign. So we ask you to copy and paste the text that is to accompany your video. We ask you to record a short self-filmed video, which is off the lines of a script, but with entirely your own perspective, but to keep it within the confines of two minutes. Then what we have is an upload schedule where everybody follows the same day, date and time upload schedule and then we ask you to upload that video and the written text to all social media platforms so that's linkedin facebook instagram twitter and all of the above now what that does is provides us with a level of organization that we've never realized in the history of being in this country this is a level of accountability where we are robustly calling to action the entire population, which is 3 million of us. We've never been this organized. We've never done this before. What happens is we work in our silos, in our disjointed pockets. Now, because we don't have a line to take or effective communication between us, our issues get lost. So let's take, for instance, when the Windrush scandal was completely exposed and we realized that the British government was actually practicing Afrophobia and institutional racism towards the African Caribbean population by destroying the records, which were the legal naturalization records of not only those who came to build the NHS, the London Underground, the civil service and many other civic areas of Britain after it was destroyed in the Second World War, but also the naturalization papers of their children. Now, Amber Rudd admitted this on camera. So this was a racist policy that was put into practice. And then what they did was, like our 
policy of coordinating with all agencies. Coordinated activity through the Home Office, with the Immigration Service, with law enforcement, the DWP, Department for Work and Pensions, the National Health, local authority, and then the educational authority, if there were any children involved, that they wanted to isolate. This is what we call a hostile policy. Now, that is what institutional racism looks like, and we should be under no illusion. So because we are aware of that, what we also realize is what we didn't have in place. What we didn't have in place was the effective organization to represent us. Because at this time, what would have happened is our justice department and our politics department would have dealt with government and had a peer conversation at a national level not only exposing it as institutionally racist, but also by having a forensic investigation into all of the activities, including the public interview of the whistleblowers, and then through our employment department, the full protection of those whistleblowers. So when you look at our employment department, think about how many of us work in public areas of life civic life who feel vulnerable based on bullying and racism imagine now how they may better protect us if we can better protect them and they know that they have a population of three million behind them and an organization with a national leadership and then the regional borough chapters and regional county chapters where all of the grassroots organizations are going to get behind them and protect them so this goes for the BPA, the Black Police Association, Equality for Black Nurses, and a number of other ethnicity-specific organizations. As I said, APAC is not a race organization. So we don't keep truck with BAME and the othering that BAME and the conflation of ethnicity is created. So there is white here where the real money remains, white English, and then there was BAME. So you guys go for BAME money. Now, when you think about the number of ethnicities that we're competing with, because BAME became a growing group for othering, there's mainstream money. Don't worry about that, guys, because there's BAME specific money. Now, if you think of a trillions turnover GDP and the fact that 90 million might be ring fenced, for BAME organizations, but also that white LGBT organizations might fit the criteria for those BAME resources. It doesn't make sense to any of us that those who don't experience racism, definitely not institutional racism, that have a robust representation as a protected group which African Caribbeans in the United Kingdom are not under legislation, should be entitled to resources specifically for and on our behalf. These are the nonsenses that APAC addresses. So when we see the conversation of dope black dads asking David Lammy whether we need a black political party specifically. Number one, let's cut out black. Black is playing the race game. Black does not exist. It does not represent African Caribbeans. Let's speak about our ethnicity. Because what happens is when you get involved in the black game, is you get into conflation. Anybody can be politically black because black is a social construct that does not exist. People can self-elect to be African Caribbean, but it will be clear that they are. Men can self-elect to be women. Anybody can self-elect to be anything, but societally we are aware of what is. So 
When we talk about a black political party, it is a nonsense. So what APAC does is support African and African Caribbean led political interests. So we formally back in policy, resources and personnel, the We Matter Party and independent candidates who are going for local authority seats. All resources reside in the local authority councils. Forget about seeing your black MP. They are handcuffed, which is what they will never tell you by party policy, which is why when you look at an MP like David Lammy, who has served in the Haringey constituency as MP since the year 2000, which was an optics candidate. Now, when the Honorable Bernie Grant passed away, his wife ran as a councillor. And the local, the local African Caribbean community said, although they loved his wife, who is English, they wanted an African Caribbean candidate. Tony Blair's new Labour put forward the young upcoming David Lammy, who in 21 years has not made one iota of progress in a mainly African Caribbean borough. He has done wonders for the local Greek and Turkish communities. He has done wonders for the local Yiddish community, but he has done absolutely nothing specifically for the African Caribbean community, which is the most sizable population in Haringey, also known as Top. So there is no Caribbean center, although you have Turkish centers, Greek centers. We have merely been unorganized and it's time to take a cold, hard look in the mirror and stop. Just draw a line in the sand and acknowledge where we are and where we are. So I had a great conversation with the candidate for New Cross, Gwenton Slowly on Wednesday, and he spoke about his desire to have a local center that oversees, just like any CVS, grassroots organization activity, spaces for young people, and activity for advocates and professionals. Now, this is exactly an ADPAC chapter that he was describing. So by collaborating with local councillors to win seats, we also gain access to resources. Now, he put forward for councillors and the mayor to donate back some of their wages. However, because we look at the institutional nature of running these civic centres, we want to partner and come and create consortiums amongst all of the local grassroots organizations, package them, and then by overseeing the activity through the Schools to Industry Pipeline app or the ADPAC app, put them in a position to be finance ready so that we can collectively go to corporations who desire to help us and have stated that they desire to help us through their corporate social responsibility. So last year when George Floyd was murdered, you had a number of top 100 companies who had pledged millions to stamping out racism in the African Caribbean, for the African Caribbean population. They set a desire to help. ADPAC now desire to have those conversations for the millions that were pledged, but were never actually donated. Our desire is to see the correct organizations who are culturally competent receive those funds so that we can then put personnel in place to irrevocably and transformationally change 
us being at the bottom of every measurable metric. It has to go past being optics. It has to go past being rhetoric now. We're at a point in history where we have seen everything transpire and understand that nothing will change. Now, under the policy of benign neglect, nothing is going to change from government based on the fact that we aren't organized enough institutionally. Well, now we are, because ADPAC will align with the Black Police Association, Equality for Black Nurses, the African Caribbean groups within the civil service, and within Pali Reach. We are here to coordinate and collaborate with all African Caribbean interests nationally. The whole point of a national leadership that go across every area of civic life, from education, through employment, health, housing, justice, politics, trade and industry, and media, is for that national leadership to engage at a peer level with those at the highest echelons of those institutions exclusively and specifically on behalf of African Caribbean people in the United Kingdom. Now, when we get to trade and industry, because we've spoken a lot about the civic nature, we work with the organizations that are aggregating African Caribbean owned businesses. So we work alongside Black Pound Day, the certified black business group who provide a kite mark for the authentication of African and African Caribbean owned businesses. And my black market that aggregates African Caribbean owned businesses to better push the services and monetize their products and services. So this is the trade and industry department's role but it's also to work with delivery partners across seas. So we work with state of the African diaspora region that represent our interests at the African Union. And in that role with the trade and industry department is to create trade deals between British African Caribbean entrepreneurs and Africans on the continent so that we can set up manufacturing plants based on the fact that the continent is a macro economy. So if we take one of our direct projects, such as Ghana, where we're intending to create construction manufacturing districts and tech manufacturing districts, £400 is a middle-class income, £400 per month. Now, professionals aren't interested in £400 a week in the United Kingdom, but it's all comparative. So when we look at a macro economy, our pound goes a lot further. And then based on the fact that English people voted for Brexit, Britain lost the European trade delivery partners. Ghana picked up the mantle as a delivery partner. So there's no import or export duty between Ghana and Britain. That's gone. So when we work in manufacturing on the continent, we can export that back to Britain for maximum profit for all parties. Now, the banking partners that ADPAC is working with are establishing the global wallet, which is the freedom of money movement for us as African Caribbeans in a sovereign entity that lies outside of the SWIFT system and outside of national borders. God's law, common law, legislative law. Everything that ADPAC is doing from this point forward lives in common law. Common law is ring-fenced and protected by sovereignty. What we haven't been doing is working as sovereigns. So when we talk about a joined-up approach, ADPAC's role is to work with organizations that specifically and exclusively are there 
for and on behalf of the interests of African and African Caribbean people. So the Black Knowledge Society, Sankofa Day, Manage Leadership, Diaspora Wire, the We Matter Party, State of the African Diaspora Region, Certified Black Business Group, Access UK, the African Diaspora Office for Statistics, My Black Market, and Black Pound Day are the tip of the spear in organizations that we work with and will be building out robust structures now to take the monies that are being put forward for government, irrespective of whether they term it BAME, we will have the specific portion that is exclusively set out for African Caribbean interests and we will receive that to work with delivery partners so that we are monetized within our entities and they can build out to become robust delivery partners that are capable of more than just um, relying on these institutions that already exist where they're being ignored through benign neglect, run their own services with their own systems that completely merge into the ADPAC project management tools so that our local citizens can be fully served by these organizations. This is the only way to circumvent the effects of racism. British African Caribbeans will never ever circumvent the effects of racism unless we establish our own robust institutional entities. So coming back to David Lammy's approach on having an African Caribbean specific political party. Number one, the We Matter Party represents everybody. Why is it African Caribbean led? specifically for us to circumvent the effects of racism. Now, many entities have been set up as alternative parties. The Green Party, Lib Dems, and you've had African Caribbean Lib Dem councillors and constituents that have complained about racism. You've had Green Party members that have sued the party for racism. There's a particular candidate that I know personally. So racism isn't conservative or liberal, is both, because they're merely left and right hands of the same body complete. We require an alternative, not because we're special, but because we're exactly the same as everybody else. And therefore, we demand exactly the same representation as everybody else. So unfortunately, if the mainstream political parties won't provide that equal representation for us, we create the entities ourselves and we will represent our interests. Now, we have never really as a community been hostile to other ethnicities. We've embraced them and their causes. When you saw the unjust and illegal war that took place in Iraq, African Caribbeans were out on the front line because our empathy based on a history of us suffering called us to action with our Arab brothers who are human beings who deserve the right in their own sovereign nation to freedom of movement and safety from falling bombs. But that has never been a reciprocal advocacy. Unfortunately, when the Windrush hostile environment was created, we saw many communities from different ethnicities stoking the flames, creating memes. Nobody stood by our sides. And these are people, not only have we stood by their sides, but we've also helped to raise money for and build out their structures. This is why I say that we are not a race organization. 
We are an ethnicity specific advocacy organization here to create parity and structural inclusion for and on behalf of the African Caribbean population. We look at what has come before us. So you have an Operation Black Vote, which is politically black. That could be black, that could be Asian, that could be LGBT. It doesn't specifically represent our interests, unfortunately. And the meager allocation of money doesn't trickle down to our organizations. So what do we do differently? We enable a national leadership and national delivery partners to better provide services exclusively for and on behalf of African Caribbean people. We do this through regional chapters. Regional chapters that receive their mandate from a very robust set of structures, policies, and a manifesto, which doesn't ignore any of our issues through benign neglect, but merely serves us to better and more effectively be included in every area of civic life with parity in the United Kingdom. Now, this spills out to our more immediate program of the Schools to Industry Pipeline, where we already have a number of national delivery partners in every single sector in that mind map, which is the public health approach to create wraparound care to protect our young people. We are in the worst state that we've ever been in this country in that now our children are killing each other. We have a huge intergenerational gap and there is a subculture that has become a mainstay for young people that enables them to commit wanton serious youth violence. So whether that is stabbings, shootings or blunt trauma, they are not scared or concerned about taking another child's life who looks like them. For the nominal infraction of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. This is a state of emergency for our children that we as adults have to take full charge of now in a number of areas. So it's more than just the provision of services that we're coordinating, but a complete transformation in culture including music projects that bring together our most influential artists, including those guys from Drill, that external ethnicities would seek to demonize, that we merely hold accountable. How do we hold you accountable and seek with love to include you if you have our young people's ears? We create projects to shift the cultural narrative away from wanton violence towards consciousness and building our communities. They are delivery partners. We don't attack our own family. Everybody is a delivery partner. When we see young groups that set out, like gang, who evolved into the Forever Family Street Patrols, we champion them, we support them. We will advocate against national newspapers like the Daily Mail, who seek to demonize them, align them with the Black Panthers who were demonized so they can be erased or potentially assassinated in the same role, in the same way. We hold this in a very dim light and we frame it in a very serious way because the collusion of media and state when we hear the language of a pretty Patel talking about the Black Lives Matter movement, which was merely to acknowledge the murder of an African-American man and indeed the African and Caribbean young men and women who've been murdered by British law enforcement in the UK with no accountability is to dehumanize us. And the first time we were dehumanized, we were 
It is what contributed to our Holocaust and made us slaves. So just like our Yiddish brothers and sisters, we say never again. ADPAC fully support forever family who are protecting our local constituents, our children, most importantly, and young people from physical threats. We seek for them to be further trained for further infrastructures to be implemented and delivered with their collaboration on their permission sets and funding fully across all of the boroughs where ADPAC has regional chapters. These young men have intervened in violent, what would have potentially been fatal encounters with not just African Caribbeans, but youths of all races in their street patrols, unfunded, unrecognized, demonized by the mainstream media. We include them in our structures, we support them and we champion their work. Now, I spoke about the BPA, where ADPAC is about to have a formal conversation around the very hard issues of structural inequality, which we commonly term structural racism within the police force. This is a conversation that is based on transformational policy, where there have to be resources attached to the conversation to allocate to the kind of solutions that I'm talking about here within these structures that we're talking about. There must now be a partnership between ADPAC, the BPA, and the Metropolitan Police Service that includes a conversation with the wider community. But this must be a formal relationship, not optics, not rhetoric, not shaking hands for the media, but a genuine, structurally inclusive policy which has economic benefits because without economic benefits, all of this is intellectual masturbation. So for us, everything is around economic justice. And when I speak about economic justice, I come to the issue of reparations. So the first issue on ADPAC's manifesto is reparations for the African Holocaust. Now, everybody has been a recipient of repertory justice, except the African descendants of slavery, be that here, be that the Americas, South America, or in the Caribbean. We haven't received a beam. Leaders have given lip service to being sorry for their part in the African Holocaust. Well, that has tangible ramifications that we call economic reparations. Those re repertory justice monies must come to the institutions, state of the African diaspora region, ADPAC, the movement for reparations run by Esther Costa Soze. And when we look at the case in Bristol, this is where we seek to create the proof of concept that will open the door and the floodgates to opening funds from the British state and corporations across all of the injustices of kidnapping us, trafficking our bodies, and then the colonial structures that remained in place after the Holocaust. Because the slave trade didn't happen in isolation. This is where our generals, our inventors, our most brilliant minds were kidnapped and slaughtered along the way, leaving many of our countries vulnerable to invasion. So the war that took place that created the African Holocaust continues to this day, which is why there are US military bases on, African, on the African continent in our countries, and there are UK military personnel, French personnel, when a war 
is lost, the military can no longer be there. Now, in the Second World War, the Germans lost. You don't have German air bases in France. You don't have German air bases in Britain. Germans didn't occupy Britain and France after they lost the war. In fact, they paid reparations to the Jewish people that they murdered through the Holocaust and their descendants and continue not only to pay their descendants, but the state of Israel on an annual basis. Now, those who committed the Jewish Holocaust are deceased and those who were in the concentration camps are deceased. There will be no stopping of repertory payments from Germany to either Israel, Jewish Americans, or Jews around the diaspora. Because repertory payments are not about it being old. It is about the apology and creating parity. And in order for us as African and African Caribbean people to create economic parity with Europeans who trafficked us, tortured us, raped us, and in the most extreme cases murdered us, there must be repertory justice, which is economic. And in that place, we align with our US brothers and sisters, our Caribbean brothers and sisters, and our South American brothers and sisters in the repertory movement, where through Esther Costa Soze and the repertory justice movement here, all of those repertory justice movements are not only aligned, but in a constant communication and sharing most effective practice. So what are we asking for with all of this? Well, one is a call to action from professionals to join ADPAC as volunteers, but not only volunteers, we want you to join our board of directors in national leadership and also in trustee roles. We want you to join us for the We Matter campaign. If you're an influencer, broadcaster or professional that has any great influence. So when we release these thunderclap campaigns, they really do hammer home that the population of African Caribbeans is aligned on particular issues like the halo code and our hair and protecting us in our employment status and in schools based on our natural hair. On issues around the Windrush generation and the atrocities and our mass deportations that continue to this day out of sight, out of mind, like when we were kidnapped and enslaved in the Caribbean. So there are universal issues that could affect all of us at any time, including police brutality, employment tribunals, or any of these issues where institutional racism affects us. We call on our organizations to join up so that we can effectively coordinate you and then bring you in as soon as we realize resources that are meted out to those who are culturally competent to deliver to us exclusively and specifically on our behalf. There'll be a national announcement when we call to action membership at five pound a month, 15 pound for organizations and 35 pound for institutional members so that we are all aware that this works specifically within our socioeconomic interests. You will hear me frequently speak about our interests. I speak about our interests based on the fact that we are African Caribbeans and we suffer a common fate. We are represented by a number of organizations that ADPAC has aggregated by working with group organizations who aggregate a number of grassroots organizations. We're very clear about our mandate. We're very clear about who we serve at an institutional level. And we're very clear about holding the British government to account, local authorities, and all of those civic organizations who seek to usurp our resources, but not enable our people in any way, shape or form. So please tune in for tomorrow's show, which is on accountability. 
accountability of African Caribbeans who are in senior positions who seek to either misrepresent our interests or align with racist interests outside of our socioeconomic mobility. What they do is they make us more vulnerable. And tomorrow we'll be here with Rat Raven discussing how we hold them accountable on code with policy that is specific that we can put into practice. Enjoy the rest of the bank holiday. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that this information is helpful. I hope that you share this with your colleagues, friends and family. And we look forward to seeing you on more episodes. Please subscribe to the website. Please continue to watch the shows, share the information, organizations, sign up to the ADPAC delivery partners, and we look forward to seeing you at the same time tomorrow. This has been Dino Kai on The Code Show, We Matter. 